How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about Shutter Magazine number five. This is for August of 2022. And if you guys are unfamiliar with this magazine, Shutter Magazine is classically styled black and white anthology horror. If you guys like the good old classic monsters and, you know, classically styled stories, you'll really like this, but they always do their best to sort of reinvent these things. You know, it's not the same story told over and over again. They combine two different elements you wouldn't think would go together, but they do. Or they find some clever twist, and if you like clever twist, the book is as always full of them. Uh, if you guys have seen uh, The Creeps, that's what this magazine used to be. They had to retitle it. And they also have a sister magazine, Vampirus Carmilla. So if you guys like either of those magazines, definitely check this out. And this time around, there are some pretty fun stories, some really clever ideas, and a few in here that I really do like. But before we go to specifics, let's switch over to the close-up camera, and we can take a closer look at this magazine. So, to the close-up camera. All right. Here we are in the castle taking a closer look at shutter number five. And first off, we obviously notice the very cool cover art here. Uh, we get this lady holding up a special goblet and behind her what appears to be the Grim Reaper with his large scythe and a mysterious tunnel there. Overall, a really good cover. I really do like the way it was painted. A uh, cover by, uh, was it San Julian there? And before the YouTube overlords get mad at me, yes, she is in a, a very small dress, but it does cover everything, so don't flip out, YouTube, okay? Uh, one other thing with this cover is a lot of times lately, the Creeps has been adapting their covers directly into stories, and while we do see that the the front references Diggers of the Pharaoh's Tomb. Uh, this isn't super, you know, adapted, you know, so it's more kind of its own thing. Yeah, in the story, Diggers of the Pharaoh's Tomb, there is, you know, a, a special concoction made and there is a female character. Uh, but yeah, not really a one-to-one -one adaption like they usually do. Overall, though, that's fine. I mean, you can do whatever you want, put whatever you want on the cover. But yeah, just know going in, we don't actually get to see this cool Grim Reaper guy, which, yeah, okay, that's a little too bad there. But anyway, open up the book, back of the cover, Auntie Fearsome's Fables is talking about ghostly spirits, and it talks about funeral rites being a thing to appease the dead. We get a little bit on haunted houses, how ghosts look in their burial garb, and so a little bit of the, the Christmas carol there, and a warning about staying away from graveyards at night because they might be real spirits. And then on the inner uh, bit here, we get the table of contents, and you can see all the credits, all the cool people that made the magazine. And the stories, we have uh, Dear Aunt Shudder, The Letters Page, Digger of the Pharaoh's Tomb, Not My Dad's Zombie, The Posse, Mysterious Meat, Halloween 2, T-O-O -O as well, and First Nighter. So we get uh, six new stories this time around. And I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about each story. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers. I'll be avoiding all those crazy twists. But I do want to tell you guys the, the gist of what each one's about and, and say my piece on a few plot points. So let's go ahead and talk about those stories. The first one is an Egyptian story. This one is Digger of the Pharaoh's Tomb. And we see these two brothers. Their father just died. And the one on the left is about to be Pharaoh. And the one on the right is secretly really, really jealous because he wants to be the new pharaoh. So, of course, we get some classic backstabbing and betrayal. There's the uh, the title card there, and the, the credits are always down there on the bottom. Uh, but he's uh, going to this uh, priest, 
and he's going to get an ointment to rub on his brother. He's going to have one of the, uh, the servant girls do it, even though the ointment will kill her as well. And that's where we get a, another bit of betrayal there, is he has this girl who loves him, and she, and, and he sets her up. He says, hey, you do this for me, and when the Pharaoh dies, she, uh, she gets blamed for the death and killed as well. So yeah, a good bit of backstabbing and betrayal. But when the other Pharaoh becomes uh, Pharaoh, he starts to think about dying and how he wants to live forever. And he, you know, building the tomb is getting to him. So he just did something really bad. And now he's thinking about how not to die. And, you know, dark twists are coming. So... A fun Egyptian story, you know, we always had the mummy as a classic horror character, but it seems like uh, in in Shudder, uh, Egypt is becoming a reoccurring uh, place to visit, even if they're not always about mummies walking around. But anyway, after that, a zombie story. Always love zombie stories. And we get a really fun opening panel here showing a bunch of zombies working in a mine which is just really cool to see all the zombies going to work. Uh, but we get this guy, he's from Haiti, and he finds out that his father just died, and the letter doesn't say how, so he's going to go down and see what's up and try to figure out what happened with his father's death. And after that, we get a whole bit about his backstory. His father was very traditional and practiced uh, magic, and when they moved to America, uh, he said that he kind of abandoned his old, uh, the old ways of his home, but his father never did, and he tried to go into business of his own, but people, you know, uh, because of race, didn't, uh, didn't support his business too much back then, but he, so yeah, he's, uh, he's struggling a little bit, but he goes and he meets the guy that told him about his father's death, and he explains that his father was still practicing and he had been making zombies to work in his mines for free from the uh, dead people at the prison. And he starts to threaten him, hey, you know about your father's magic still, you need to make me some more zombies because they all died when he did. So, yeah, classic... Uh, classic zombie tale trying to get, you know, something that uh, you shouldn't have, all this, you know, free labor. And of course, you know, forcing the guy to practice magic again and he doesn't want to, it's going to lead to some classic comeuffins at the end. But overall, a different idea for a zombie story. It's not just survival, you know, you're going back to old voodoo zombies and, you know, they're not you know, swarming you and trying to eat your brains, they're, they're being used as forced labor in a mine, it's a really different idea for a zombie story, and I, I always love how The Creeps, Carmilla, and now Shudder just re reorganizes these ideas, and you know, they take them and they put them in a new light. That's always really fun. Anyway, up next is The Posse, so another cowboy story. And we get these bad guys up here, a lone bounty hunter comes up to them, and they decide to shoot him, but he doesn't die, because it turns out he's a vampire, and these bounty hunters are bringing back the staked bodies of all their bounties, and turning them into the sheriff, and the sheriff does like that they're cleaning up crime, but he knows that he's dealing with something he shouldn't, and is going to try to find a way out. Again, though, you're messing with something supernatural, it's going to once again lead to backstabbing, betrayal, and horrible endings for some people. A really cool idea, you know, the idea that a, a vampire would be a really good bounty hunter, you know, because he can't die, you just walk up to the target and eat him. So, again, that clever reorganizing of classic monsters and also the Wild West setting is a, a place much like Egypt that Shudder will revisit from time to time but in different ways. And up next, 
mysterious meat. And I thought at first that this was going to be the, uh, the classic horror story, but I don't think we have a classic horror story this time around, but this one does feel very old school. They just don't have a, they just don't have a credit. Uh, but anyway, you get this small town, and this is one of the few businesses, and they're famous for their soup, and we get this one pa uh, patron that just can't get enough of it, and a stranger walks in, and the stranger goes, I'll have a beer, I'll have some of that stew, and I'll have a room. And I really love this panel with uh, the patron that's addicted to the stew just slurping it up and, Sir, you will love the stew. It's simply divine. I don't know, this is just a really good panel where it's all spilling down there. Uh, but anyway, being a lonesome stranger, he's the uh, the perfect target. So the new guy that walks in gets killed in his sleep by the uh, hotel owner. This is, you know, a restaurant and hotel. And you find out his backstory. He was in the war and there wasn't enough food. So at first he had to do it. But then when he got this hotel and one of the patrons died, he stumbled back into it again. And, you know, a whole bit about how he's hiding the bodies. But of course, the guy he just killed is not just anybody, he was a wanted man, so now the heat's on a little bit for him and his operation. And overall, I really just love, you know, gruesome, macabre stories like that, you know? Whenever you do cannibal stuff, it always just gets really dark, and, and I really do like that. And plus, you know, a murder hotel, little hints of, you know, what H.H. H. Holmes and stuff, Overall, I really did like that story. That was a that one was a pretty fun one. Um, and then after that, Halloween Two, which is a, a bit of a slasher. Which the the Shutter doesn't always do too many slasher stories, but they do pop up from time to time. And I always do love when they pop up because I'm a huge slasher geek. And plus, a Halloween story as well. Uh, we get these teens, they're uh, in high school, a little too old to trick-or-treat, but they don't really know what to do instead. And they get this one friend who's kind of the prankster, and he talks about the Barlow house, and he tells the story, it's on Carpenter Street, of course, um, there was this guy, he inherited his house after his parents disappeared, and everybody kind of thought that he murdered them, but there was never any proof. But people started harassing him, and one day, some kids broke into his house. He hides in the attic, and he sees an old Halloween mask, and plus he's, you know, literally got someone breaking into his house. That triggers him, and he goes on a killing spree, killing all those teens. Now, after that... He gets sentenced to a mental institution, which is not 100% fair, really, because, you know, it was basically self-defense, but uh, he goes to the institution for the criminally insane, but he escapes, and legend has it that on Halloween night, he returns to his house and kills whoever's in there, you know, so if anyone buys it or if anyone sneaks into party, he'll kill them. And then we get this panel down here that's a really fun recreation of a scene from Halloween. And, you know, even in Halloween, they almost used a clown mask for Michael Myers because he had the clown mask when he was a kid. Uh, so I found that, you know, some fun references to Carpenter in here. But, of course, they bet each other that they don't have the guts to, to spend Halloween night in the murder house. And they're going to see if... The slasher legend is real, and some good classic shutter twist along the way, but I really do love slasher stuff, and it's always fun to see when one pops up. Uh, moving along to actually the last story here, uh, we get uh, First Nighter, and it's about this guy, he uh, has a broken heart, he has cancer, and he has a bunch of debt, so seeing as how he doesn't have much to live for, he decides to jump in the river. But rather than dying, he washes up on shore, not dead. But he doesn't feel the cancer anymore, and all he feels is hunger. So he wanders into the inn, and he finds out it's actually a few days later than he thought it was, 
and all the food is tasteless. So he doesn't really know what's going on, but he feels the strange need to go back and talk to his uh, old girlfriend that dumped him. And they soon find that he's uh, he's changed in a few uh, mysterious ways. And this is the first night of his new and different life. A really cool um, r a different way to go into this creature. I won't spoil what it is, but you can probably guess pretty quickly what he's become. But the idea of stumbling into this new life and sort of approaching it from a different angle, it's also one that's told in the second person where they're saying, you are this guy and you're doing these things. And overall, yeah, a fun story of stumbling into this new life and what have I become. So that was a fun story as well. And we're already at the end of the magazine. I always say this every time, but we really do blow through these really quick. A ton of fun stories. I really did love the, the gruesome cannibal story and the zombie story was really fun. And all the stories in here are really good. Um... But like always, you know, they take classic horror elements, recombine them in really interesting ways, and they give you fun twists and some really cool, horrific, gruesome moments. And Shudder Magazine and its sister magazine, Carmilla, are just remarkably consistent in this way. And this is another great issue of the magazine that I definitely had a ton of fun with. Uh, so I definitely recommend it if you like classic horror, if you like anthology horror, if you like horror comics, definitely check out Shudder. And number five was another good issue. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. If you like hearing me talk about this stuff, a playlist will pop up on the bottom in a little bit. This should be my creeps slash Carmilla slash Shudder playlist and you can hear me talk about a whole bunch more of these stories. So if you want to see more, you can click there and see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.